Hey everybody, this is Mark Bozon. I'm here to give you guys the video review for Knight's Journey of Dreams for Nintendo Wii. Some games we come across here at IGN are pretty easy to rate. Uh, Knight's Journey of Dreams was not one of those. It's actually kind of tough to put a number on this one. Uh, and it, it has to do a ton because of, uh, you know, the nostalgia factor that we're going to get. Obviously, for some hardcore gamers, uh, Knight's is going to be a sequel that you've been looking forward to for over a decade. It originally came out on Saturn. A lot of people have a lot of high hopes for this game, and uh, a lot of them may not want to see the flaws that this game has, though there definitely are some. What you're going to end up seeing because of that then is a lot of hardcore people that may be a little bit more forgiving than most will be, and uh, some newcomers that may or may not get uh, pulled into this world the way that people did over a decade ago on Saturn. We're going to jump right into it though, because there's a lot to talk about. Uh, for starters, Nice opens up the world a little bit more. It's more adventure focused this time around. Uh, they kind of stray away from the traditional Knights gameplay, if you will. A lot of it was about analog control, uh, flying through these kind of 2D worlds, which obviously you're going to see again. But it definitely opens the story up a little more. Some people may like it, some people may not. We happen to be on the side that doesn't quite enjoy it as much. Uh, the story follows Will and Helen. They're basically two kids that are each struggling with inner demons that are a lot alike. Uh, Will's dealing with a dad who seems to be away all the time. He used to hang out a bunch, and now he's, you know, uh, flying and doing trips, apparently. And on Helen's side, she kind of turned her back on her mom, which you can see in this opening CG clip here. And uh, they're both kind of dealing with this, and their kind of their worries and the, all the stress of the day actually goes into the Knight's world, uh, Nightopia, and uh, takes the form of nightmares, which they're going to have to battle quite literally here in the game. Now, this game is developed by Sonic Team. Uh, they're pretty much known for two things uh, very positively. First of all, it's CG, which you're obviously going to see a ton of that here. And also VO. They've always done a ton with Sonic, and uh, it returns again with Knights. Everybody has VO. The entire game is voice acted. And it does give a you know pretty good cinematic feel to the entire game, despite some pacing issues, which we'll go into. They aim to take Idia from visitors so they can destroy Nightopia. All around, though, the presentation is actually pretty decent. Uh, where the problem comes in is when you get into the specific gameplay elements. For starters, you're going to want to toss away any Wii Remote Motion or IR. Uh, there is IR in the game. Motion isn't supported, but the IR actually is not so hot as you can see here. Uh, you're instead going to want to use either Classic Controller or Nunchuck and Wii Remote or uh, GameCube Controller. Um, those work a little bit better, but it is still a little rough. You don't get that kind of fluidity that you got in flying uh, with the original Saturn game. And uh, that's going to actually be a huge amount of our complaints come from just rough gameplay and uh, something that overall lacks a ton of polish throughout. On top of that, you've also got all these alternate modes of play. There are things like Rocket Knights, which you can see here, he's boosting around in this roller coaster level. Uh, you're going to play as the children, do some minor platforming, and uh, things like this river rafting here. And uh, all those, you know, they come, they come across decently, but the gameplay overall is just really rough, and uh, again, it's just not very polished. And in the end, we obviously would have wanted to see a ton more focus on the overall flying and the kind of the arcade aspects that you saw in Saturn, and a lot less put on this diverse world that has been opened up uh, really for no no good reason. Newcomers to the series may not see this as much, but the retro fans such as myself are definitely going to want a lot more just the core gameplay, and in the end you really only get a handful of levels that really feel like true Knights gameplay. As for the overall pacing in the game, uh, it's a little cluttered. There's uh, no way to skip story sequences. Also, many of the sequences end up dragging on for minutes and minutes at a time, sometimes hitting like the five minute mark, and uh, it's definitely a little bit long, especially considering another thing I mentioned in the written review, is that when you fail missions, uh, you don't only replay that little section, you actually go all the way back to the beginning of that dream, if you will. So uh, if you're fighting a boss at the very end of the game, let's say, and uh, you die, you go all the way back to the beginning, which means you watch all scripted sequences again, all story elements, you play through multiple levels of traditional night's play, or you know whatever it is that you're playing in those levels, then you get to the boss fight, you get one chance, if you die again, all the way back to the beginning again. Really breaks up the mood and, uh, you know kind of makes what otherwise is a pretty decent story and a pretty solid amount of arcade play, very, very galaxy-like in the way that uh, all the levels are set up, really breaks that up and uh, makes it kind of monotonous. I want to stress it again here too, now that you're actually watching the game, uh, you know, live in front of you here. Um, the main gameplay can still be fun. It can be. It's, a, it's, you know, very much like the old game, very reminiscent of it. But uh, it's obviously a rushed effort. When you get the controller in your hand and you feel this different gameplay modes and all the different things you're trying to do, it definitely feels like uh, they didn't quite get analog control right, which is really annoying. Um, both of Will and Helen's story modes are also just a couple hours long, and uh, the multiplayer basically boils down to racing, online and offline mode, because the battle mode is pretty weak. You're shooting these slow projectiles at fast-moving characters, so obviously you're not going to hit people very often. Uh, aside from that, you've got a final product that just ends up uh, feeling like it needed a bit more time and a bit more focus on the right areas, the ones that people wanted to play over and over again.
As a final note on kind of the presentation here in this game, uh, you get a lot of load times. I mean, obviously you're going to have some. It's a, you know, it's a disk drive system, so you're going to have to load up things anyways. But when you retry, when you go back and do uh, sections over and over again, if you die, things like that, you get these loads all the time. Also, what you're going to notice here when the screen goes black, this is actually a load time before the main final levels, you know, the, the final chunk of the game here. Um, and it, the music is playing in the background, but you've got nothing else that happens here. And uh, it doesn't say loading. You know, it doesn't show an animation like it normally does. And it honestly feels like the game is either broken or just stuttering up for some reason. And uh, that's really weird one. Really breaks up the flow a bit. Obviously, the entire game, though, isn't bad. I mean, that's, you know, there are high points to this game. There are reasons that hardcore gamers, retro gamers that love the original game are going to want to pick this one up again. And uh, those actually come through great, which is why, again, just like Sonic, we want to see a uh, sequel to Knights. First of all, the boss battles are great. We're going to show you a couple clips here. Not going to spoil anything, but uh, they're really cool. A ton of great ideas. Uh, the game also uses a great mix of control modes. You can play with IR if you want to try it. It's very broken, but at least you can use Class Controller, GameCube Controller, and the default Nunchuck and Wii Remote. There is online and local play, so if you want to play racing, you can do it locally or online. And some neat ideas to the whole My Dream World. Also, as a final note, the uh, music is extremely beautiful. The VO is kind of annoying at times. Some of the kids uh, don't really come across very well, and there's some normalizing issues. But uh, the music is beautiful. Orchestrated music. Uh, really, really wonderful to listen to. There are a few really strange tracks in there, but uh, overall, pretty strong. So in the end, what you basically have is a, a nice game that falls exactly into our mid-six category, which is what we rated it. It's a passable game. It's got some pretty sizable flaws, but for fans of you know the series, people that like Knights, you're still going to find a way to enjoy it as long as you're pretty forgiving on some of those faults that the game does have. Would we really consider this one a successful rebirth of the franchise in our eyes? You know, not not quite. Uh, it's kind of like Sonic and the Secret Rings where uh, it's a good first step. And hopefully if they stick with it, if they make another Knights game, they'll focus on the things that really matter to the retro gamers and will actually pull in new gamers uh, with just straight up arcade, entertaining gameplay. And uh, as long as you get the fluidity of flight, kind of work out the little weird wonky issues that are in this game, uh, you could have a pretty solid uh, you know, rebirth of the franchise. So hopefully they'll stick with it and uh, really focus on what made Knights originally awesome and uh, put it back into a sequel for this game. For the full written review, check out IGN.com.